I'll just go over my knife kit, which is my beat here too, while I'm sitting here on the balcony. First of all, I have a little lanyard. This is power cord, it's also got a reflective weave in it. The idea is if I drop it, my head light will light it up, also the orange is a bit more visible. To attach it to the beak here too, I'll just thread it through the hole, then put a lark's head on it, and a figure of eight stop it on the end. And that's just enough for my wrist to go through and get a hold of the knife, and not much give. On well, the knife itself, this is the original Mark II sheath. On the knife itself I found there was a ridge where the scales meet the tang and with them being sort of grivy or plastic scales they tend to dig in my hand and hurt so what I've done is got a piece of bicycle in the tube put it on there that's levelled it out gives me much better grip also when it's wet it gives us a much better grip with the bean rubber I can also use that to set on fire and produce really thick black smoke which would contrast in a snowy environment or I can also use that to help start off wet kindling and then I've just taken my knife sharpeners scratched all the black off um, on that coat because once you use your knife a bit the black goes away and I've tried to polish it up a little bit the best I can um, as you can see this knife is well loved, well used and abused it's not something that's designed to be sat on a shelf you know, this knife is designed to be used On the sheath itself, I've added this AC sheath pouch, or SE sheath pouch, and it comes with all the fittings, it comes with the screws there, and the screws up there. These screws here were originally up here as part of the BK2 sheath. However, I found fitting the sheath pouch on was a bit tricky, so I've taken them off, moved them down, and two of the screws with the sheath pouch I've put there. The pouch itself comes with a little Altoids type tin, but not an Altoids tin. It has a very heavy duty buckle with a Velcro strap, if I can just loosen it there, which believe it or not, does loosen off, just the Velcro is getting in the way, and it gets quite large, um, so you can stick something quite oversized in the pouch. It also has a large strip of elastic going the full way over the pouch. On here I have a light my fire ferro rod and I have just added a strip of elastic shock cord to help try and keep it in there. What I do with mine, I get a hold of this elastic, stick my ferro rod down the side of it, pull my elastic over the top and that locks it in. It is a bit tricky to get out but it can come out so that's just one thing to bear in mind there. I say that is the light my fire Rod. That's the military 2.0 version. There's my Altoids tin. I'll just move the knife off to one side. On this, as you can see, I have three strips of bicycle inner tube or Ranger bands, as it's sometimes called. I also have a magnetic needle on the side there with some bank line in and a Tops dog tag signal mirror. I'll just take these elastics off and then we'll get into the kit a bit better. These elastics provide just compactness, keep it closed for me. Again, I can use for fires and whatnot as well. Right. So, let's move elastics to one side there. That is the Tops Dog Tag signal mirror. Just a highly polished piece of metal. Yes, this can do with being repolished to get it up there. Speed. Actually, it clouds, but you should be able to see that um, reflecting. And here I've just got some uh, bank line from the Bushcraft store. I think it's called Tard Mariner's line from the Bushcraft store. It's actually three ply. I've split this down into a single ply of it. And just ideal for mending things. I've recently mended my axe sheath using that. The needle is magnetic. And therefore I can use it as a compass if it needs to. Used for mending packs. Um, Dave Canterbury suggests using this type of needle for first aid. Personally, I think that would cause more damage than anything else, but it is what it is. Right. Moving on to the tin itself, it's just a normal small Altoids tin. Opening up the tin, I have a large magnifying glass. 
this is great for getting splinters out your fingers more importantly starting fires because that's what this tin is this is my fire starting tin so I have on my knife I have a ferro rod and a magnifying glass the thing about the magnifying glass is the sun's free it will never ever run out okay. I have a bit of dupe twine in there which can be fluffed up like this piece is which will take a spark very readily that's ideal for making the innards of a bird's nest, which I'll cut in another video. I have a Bic lighter, here, orange in colour, just to help with visibility. I have two wet fire cubes. These are basically fire lighters, and they are tiny little squares. I could possibly get them both inside one packet, I don't know why the packs are so big. But the good thing about these are they actually burn better in water than they do when they're dry. Kind of weird. Of course, you can powder them up and they'll take a spark, light them with your lighter, and you'll chew a flame. I have a cotton wool ball. This cotton wool ball just being slightly fluffed up where it's being stuffed in my tub, and I have two of them. Again, these will take a spark very, very easily. That black stuff you see all around them is the remnants of uh, some char clock I've got in here. And all I've done there was got an old tea towel. Had a few holes in it. Stuck my tin, stuck in the fire, burnt it without oxygen by sealing the tin and letting the gases escape. These pink sticks you can see in here, these are Micro Inferno, I sold on the Pathfinder website. I do believe you can also get them on adcdepot.co.uk. As you can see, that one's slightly smaller than the rest. Um, start my last emergency fire. I just cut the end off, warmed it up, fluffed it up, and it started a fire straight away. Put it back in, I tend to have my lighter flat, char cloth in one side, the cotton wool ball on top. Take out my fire lighters. Oh, Micro thermal, sorry. There's one of them in there, another one down the side. Jam that in somewhere. Wherever I live, we have a lot of birch, spruce, and pine, so I have a lot of natural fire start material. There we go. Around me as well. And then get one of these bands, place it over the top, and have that dead centre. Get all the kicks out so it's nice and flat. Place that in there. Second band over the top, and I try and cover the hinges um, for no other reason than for the protection of the kit. Um, the hinges are a potential sharp uh, corner. Placing them in and out of the pouch over time would eventually uh, wear away on the inside of the pouch. So that is the only reason for trying to cover them hinges. Yeah, this needle does come in handy for numerous things. There we go. Hinges covered, edges of the mirror are covered. Take my needle and just slide it down the elastic. Wind it up. Show the back of your pouch. And I'm just going to readjust this. At the beginning of the video, I just to show you its usefulness. And I'm just going to adjust this tight again. Do I like it? And then take your ferro rod. Aha! Cotton balls left out. Take your ferro rod. Put that in there. And there, that does explain the gap. And there we have it. We BK2 life kit.